there's something that I want to read y'all and that I'm closing. And it's from this book, if any of you ever want to pick it up. It's from a book called A Metaphysical and Symbolic Interpretations of the Bible by Mildred Mann. And it goes on to say, this portion that I want to read y'all, the book of Numbers is divided into three distinct sections. The first section, the first 10 chapters concern the journey of the Israelites into the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Okay, we looked at Mount Sinai. Did I give y'all that? I think we went over that already. I don't want to keep going over it because I'm already going here long. So it consists of a journey from Mount Sinai Um, when we look at Sinai, metaphysically, it translates into um, a cliff, a deep ravine, sharp or jagged. Um, it also goes on to say that um, Sinai metaphysically translates into um, hold on, y'all. Uh, it translates into the wilderness or the desert of Sinai signifies the state of consciousness in which we find the exalted place in mind that the mountains call Sinai. So here we see the children um, of Israel go through the first journey of uh, finding their way through the wilderness of Sinai, which is their um, their their thoughts or their high thoughts, their consciousness coming into an exalted place or coming into an exalted state. Uh, the second part of their migration uh, to and living in the wilderness of Paran. So the second part of their journey consisted of them going into the land of Paran. When we look metaphysically at Paran, it translates into the multitude of unseemly confused and undisciplined thoughts of the subconscious mind. So as we go into the... As we go into, take, as the Israelites took on the journey of Mount Sinai in the wilderness, here we see spirit bringing our consciousness into a high state, um, a high state of exalted thoughts. And through going through the, this stage of high exalted thoughts, it brings us into the realm of the Paran, which has us, has us going through uh, the multitudes of seemingly confused and undisciplined thoughts that exist within the subconscious mind in order for us to bring uh, them into harmony and for us to bring them into order. And so after the Israelites leaves the wilderness of Paran, finally they end uh, their arrival at Moab. When we look at Moab, Moab uh, metaphysically translates into um, meaning the seed of the father or flowing from the father. Okay. It goes on to say that Ruth who plays who Ruth who represents the love of the natural soul of God and from whom David and Jesus were, were descended was a Moabite a Moabitess. So here we see when the Israelites land and come into the land of Moab, we see the final um, climax of their journey or of their ascension. And here we see them take on um the mind of Moab or coming into the seat of the father or coming to the center of the father or coming into relationship with the father. Moab represents the body and the, and the most external conditions of life. Okay. This is something good. And at least it, it was something good, right? And, and studying the external conditions of life. So really understanding the conditions of how you operate, understanding uh, the conditions of your experience, understanding the conditions of the world that we live in, understanding the conditions of your mind. So here we see the Israelites end their journey and, and the state of really understanding their conditions. And through understanding their, their conditions, they ascend. From out of the land of Moab and they ascend into a Moabitess. And when we look at the metaphysical symbolism of the Moabitess, who is also, who is it T? It's the Asiatic woman. 
okay, of the Moorish American. That's how y'all know that we really it. Like we we really are the it's us. <laughs> so here we see the Israelites in their journey and at the final level of their ascension, they're transcended from a Moab and they transform into a Moabitess. And when we look at the symbolism of the Moabitess, it translates into a female descendant of the Moab. Ruth, the, Mo the Moabitess. Okay. She became the great grandmother of David. Metaphysically, Moabitess translates into the carnal mind as it pertains to the soul of man. Ruth the Moabitess symbolizes human love raised to the divine because of its willingness to leave, to leave the love of the unreal. And so we ascend our nature through, the, through understanding the alchemical encounter that Moses had by raising our love of leaving behind what's not real. Okay? By leaving behind the love of humanity. By leaving behind the love of the senses or of the material plane. Okay? And focusing our energy on that which is real. The only thing that exists and that is truly real in the experience of the material is the Holy Spirit or the breath of life. And Spirit is asking under this new moon and Scorpio how are you using your spiritual development? How are you operating in your spiritual development? Exodus told us the amazing story of how God sent Moses to deliver his people from the Egyptians. But ultimately, it told the story of spiritual development. And one message uh, or one call that I feel uh, the message of Moses is, is really urging us into uh, the power of transformation and into the realm of darkness urging you to sit with your voids, to sit with your own structures that you build up in yourself, to sit with the unreal worlds and the unreal emotions and senses that you've created out of nothingness. And spirit is desiring for you to bring both of those things into harmony with each other. Because they're all making for this, this spiritual um, journey that we're all encountering, right? 